So I don't know if this is going to be a new series or not, but I was thinking about doing this because I've been finding a lot of uses, as I, I think a lot of us have are, are now, for 3D printing in the home shop. As anybody who gets a 3D printer will, will probably tell you, uh, it opens up a whole different mindset because you can design them and produce them so fast that uh, it's, it's really, I don't want to say the word game changing, but it lets you get your ideas out there a lot quicker than, than, than working in metal and it allows you to explore uh, designs and things a lot quicker than working in metal. For the purpose, of course, of eventually making them in metal, except a few things which are useful as their own, as a 3D printed part. Uh, a nose cap for a lathe, uh, my stops that you've seen before, I'm sure, if you've seen my other videos. Making really fast, simple organizers for sockets. You know, this drawer used to be full of all these sockets just kind of thrown in there. They're my, you know, these are my backups, my extras, my, my 10 number 10s, you know. And wrenches, organizers for wrenches, you know, it, you know, these sorts of things that plastic excels at. You know, just the basic little organizer. Very simple. It just keeps them all together. You can do these little stackable guys. You know, this is plastic excels at this sort of thing. Fast, inexpensive storage. You know, once you're set up with everything, you make these for 10 or 15 cents a piece. You make them quick, you don't care what they look like, you don't care that they have some lines in them. That, that's what plastic excels at. Functional little items. That all said, something I've recently discovered, and it's not something new, it's just something I recently discovered and I wanted to share with you all, is gaskets. Now, the little ubiquitous gasket. This is a gasket from a Husqvarna trimmer. It's an odd shape. It fits around the carburetor. Here's the carburetor, and the linkage goes through here, and this is just an alignment post. And this whole section right here is just um, dust cover, a heat shield, or a heat brake for, for the fuel lines. Very simple little thing, but, but if you tear one and you don't have a replacement, you know, this is not that easy to make in paper. You know, you can do it, of course, or you can make something very similar. I spent, you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes, as long as I'd spend doing it in paper, and now I can print these all day long. The thing is, though, this isn't your typical 3D printing plastic. And that's sort of the point of this video. It's not really about your typical 3D printing plastics, which are Let's be honest, they're fairly easy to break. They're, they're rugged. If you design them correctly, they're very rugged. But you can break them. You know, I can, I can break that by hand. I'm not going to break this by hand, but, you know, you could put, put it in a vise and you could smack it with a hammer and break it. This, however, is a different material. It's printable on just about every 3D printer with a caveat, and I'll go into that in a minute. This is called TPU. It's thermoplastic polyurethane. And essentially, it's almost a rubber consistency, but very flexible. It squeezes. You can squeeze it. It is nearly indestructible without a knife or scissors. I mean, you're, you're, you'd be, have to be pretty strong to tear this apart. And recently, I was... I don't even know what I was looking at. I was just looking at a forum and I saw that somebody had mentioned making gaskets and they had a picture of making vintage car gaskets. You know, the type of thing that uh, are hard to find, you have to make your own, or expensive, and none of them come in like a, a high quality plastic. Now, TPU is fairly heat resistant up until about, you know, 200 degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit, Celsius. That's probably, I don't know, 8,000 degrees Fahrenheit or something like that. Oh, I'll put it right here. But for certain applications, a carb gasket, uh, a gasket on a lathe, for instance, this is almost a perfect material because it's not going to tear like paper would. You can take your part off and on this stuff. You don't have to use any sealant. And forgive me, but this sort of thing is the sort of thing that just makes me go, wow, that's, that's almost game-changing because now with a 3D printer and a little bit of filament, you have the ability to, to make nearly any gasket you want. So this is the original intake gasket off of my, my Craftsman lawnmower that I do all kinds of experiments on. Let's replicate this in TPU, put it on there, 
run the machine and see what happens to the material after it's been run. And then we'll come back and look at something that I think for us guys that have mills and lathes and machines that hold oil, this could also be something that's really useful. But before we go do that, let's also have another little test going. This is two-stroke gasoline. It's a mix of gasoline and two-stroke oil. I'm going to take this gasket, which was actually a, I had one of the holes a little bit off, so, you know, I had to print it again. It's the same as this gasket. I just had to print it again. But this one I actually cut the edge off of. So, now if you notice how these are made, you'll notice that there's lines along the wall. Kind of see that. And those are printed, just, printer just runs around there. And then it comes back and it fills in between the lines. It's basically how it goes. And you'll notice that the walls around the, the circles as well and the other cutouts in there. So what I did was I just cut off a little section of the, the wall to open up this matrix in here that is the lines going across the body. And so that'll allow this two-stroke gasoline to be in contact with and get in between the layers. And later in the video we'll come back and see if it's been affected at all by this stuff because you know that's a concern you don't want to put a gasket on that's going to or it's going to degrade or you know deform away you you want it to stay the same consistency you put it in so let's throw that in there we're going to leave that in there for at least several hours and uh, we'll come back at the end of the video and see if that's uh, made any difference Alright guys, so I thought this might be a good test subject. I just put this new Hypa carburetor on. It runs great. I use the original gasket. And you can see here, this is the gasket that was on there beforehand. See how deformed it is. It's just a normal gasket. Nothing, nothing special. And I printed off one of these. This is our 3D printed gasket. And uh, I'm going to stick it on there and uh, see if it makes any difference. I don't think it'll make any difference running, but we're going to test it out. We're going to run it for a little while. I'll go mow the lawn. We'll, s we'll take it back off and see if the gasket deformed or is still good. Okay, so we got this gasket off. You can see this is the new Hypa gasket that came with it. Nothing wrong with that gasket, but we're, not he we're here to test 3D printed gaskets. Gas is still on. All right, let's give it a shot. Let's just start it up, see if it runs. Make sure that it runs. We don't have any air leaks or anything. That's low idle, so we we're going to hear air leaks or popping. That's where we hear it. Nice and smooth. Much smoother than the other carburetor was in there. It needed to clean badly. You can see the gasket there is kind of rolled over on the edges. That's to be expected. That's that's not heat. That's just pressure. The real test is going to be taking it out. I'm going to mow for about an hour. You can watch me do that if you want. Or you can skip ahead in the video and I'll come back and see what kind of, um, see if we have any deformation of a gasket or if it's degrading or anything. So let's give it a shot. I still need to make a grill for this thing. I got the old red green duct tape holding the grill on. That grill's seen better days. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link in the description where I actually fixed this hood. I didn't fix the grill, obviously, but I did remake the mounting hardware. Anyway, that's not what we're here for. What we're here for is to see how this gasket did after uh, about an hour of mowing in my dusty yard. So uh, let me take this apart again. <laughs> There's one thing I don't like doing, it's doing the same job over and over, but you know, for the sake of the video, I have to do the same job over and over. So, let me take the uh, carburetor off and uh, get that gasket off and see what it looks like. Oh, by the way, the mower did fine. I ne never had any coughing or anything, so I don't think there's going to be a problem with the seal of the gasket. I'm just curious if it's if it deformed at all. So the engine is extremely hot. Now, of course, in this application, you've got a little separation of the carburetor. Well, you want separation for the carburetor, don't you? You don't want the fuel to boil over. Uh, the carburetor is warm. I wouldn't say I could touch it. It's definitely not a problem. 
I don't want to touch this heat shield right here and even taking the plastic cover off the top was was very hot so it does get hot in here first reactions is it's just basically the same as it was no issues there yeah so this is not a review for this new hypercarb but this new hypercarb but um, it did perform well less sputtering than I did have with the old carburetor the old dirty carb so that's definitely a plus okay so I don't see see a little bit of just deformation where the carb pushed into it just right right in here there's a little ring where the carb body pushed into it which you'd expect for a rubber a rubberized gasket but no melting it didn't really get that hot so in you know in this application you're uh, well removed from the major engine heat there's no uh, degradation from uh, oil and air passing over it it's not you know it's not uh, weathered if you will from that uh, flow of of uh, gasoline and air and you saw it came right off it's definitely reusable unlike your paper gaskets which I mean you could reuse this if you had to but you really don't want to and this is that ring I'm talking about see this ring right here you can just kind of see it in the, the TPU gasket you look at just the right angle you might catch it maybe more on this side and you can see this bump right here you can see it right there so it did seal it did uh, push itself into into the sealing surfaces just like it's supposed to I would say that uh, so far that's a success now I'm gonna put this back on here I'm gonna run it this year I'm gonna run it you know this year I mow my lawn probably you know once a week once every two weeks or so and uh, we'll just leave it on there and um, do a follow-up video and see how it performs at the end of the year at the end of the season anyway so yeah I'd say uh, this is a viable alternative uh, I much prefer a rubber type gasket than a than a paper gasket I mean they just they they tend to hold up longer and um, they don't uh, tear so and you're not going to tear this thing so I'm going to put it back on and I'm going to show you another use for this type of gasket. All right, we are at my mill lathe combo and there is an access port back here. Now this access port, hopefully you can see that, there it is. That access port ha is the way you access to lubricate the spindle and um, I usually use grease and uh, I do put oil in there as well. Now the reason I like to put a little oil in there is because uh, as a bit of oil in there is because I like the splash effect of getting the oil. It's not a big deal, I don't think. I think originally these things were just greased. But I do put oil in there. It looks like I need to top it off. So the cap that goes on there is this guy here. And actually when I got this machine it was missing the cap. So I had to make a cover out of stainless steel and then I just use some cork gasket material to make a gasket and you can see this one's it leaks you know it's not great it keeps the majority of the oil and grease in there and as importantly it keeps stuff out but it's seen better days so I went ahead and I printed one of these it should go right on there just like that and we're gonna put that on there and uh, run the machine a little bit and see if it leaks any oil out of there because that's what it'll do here I don't think there's any going to be any problem with this this material deforming in this case because it's not going to get hot right there at all but um, let's just see if it leaks oil alright so I really couldn't get you in there to, to show you putting it on but I think you can see it there you can see the gaskets on there and uh, I've run the machine and um, not a drop absolutely not a drop under there so that's cool that's a lot neater than this old thing I can throw it away and uh, 
you know I've had to replace this half a dozen times maybe over the years it gets ripped when I take it off or whatever so hopefully that one will uh, last a lifetime at least my lifetime now I will also say that I did mention that most 3d printers will print this of course it has to be an FDM printer which is a, a fuse fuse deposition material printer where it lays down uh, filament basically not to get real technical but there's two different ways that the filament is driven through the hot end of the machine there is direct drive and there is what is called a Bowden tube system in the Bowden tube system the filament actually is pushed through a tube to the hot end now this is very this is very flexible material so if you can imagine trying to push a wet noodle through something uh, it, it works it doesn't I don't want to say that it doesn't work on Bowden type machines it, it does work on Bowden type machines it just can be a little bit more difficult than a direct drive machine which is what this one is with a direct drive you see that there's it's pulled into the it's basically mostly pulled into the hot end I hope that kind of makes sense. That's just a buyer's guide if you're really interested in making some some of these. You might if you're really interested in using TPU, you may want to think about uh, direct drive over Bowden, but like I said, you can use either one. The Bowden tube is just a little bit more finicky. All right guys, I hope you've gotten something out of this. Now, this is the last test I'm going to do for this video. And here is our piece of TPU that's been soaking in here for a couple hours let me actually just dry it off so we've got a comparison piece here I'm just kind of feeling to see if it's softer or if I feel any difference whatsoever after it's been soaking in there and I'd say no now one caveat with this though I have read that the different manufacturers of TPUs of these TPU filament use slightly different formulations. So if I was going to put this in a situation where it comes in contact with a lot of gas and oil um, like I just did I would do a little test and just you know put it in submerge a piece of it in some uh, some gasoline uh, a gasoline oil mix what have you for a few hours and for an hour for a few hours and just see if um, that particular manufacturer's brand of TPU is a little bit more uh, susceptible to, uh, you know, degrading in that respect. And just out of curiosity, last thing here, as we all know, acetone and plastics don't always go together. I'm kind of curious if acetone will do anything to this plastic. Normally you rub acetone across plastic and it'll, it's not pretty, let's just put it that way. So no dyes coming off, so whatever the dye is in there, it's permanent. It's fine with that. So now this is usually, a it, unlike a gasoline or oil situation, if acetone is going to affect it, it should do it right away. In fact, probably if I take a little bit of acetone on one of these, these are uh, PLA, which is your common. If I take a little bit, let's do it on the bottom. Yeah, see, it, see what it does? It, it actually gets sticky. It's actually, whereas, whereas it's smooth over here, when you rub acetone across it, it actually gets like stickiness, which means that it's starting to break down the, uh, the plastic. On this, nothing. So you know, do your own test. But uh, I'm I'm pretty impressed with this stuff, and um, I think there's going to be a lot of uses for this stuff in the future in in the home shop scenarios. Just you know, making little gaskets. It's it's not an, it's not a extremely expensive material. You know, there are materials out there, some nylons and carbon fiber stuff that is extremely expensive. This stuff is not more much more expensive, if at all, than just your normal PLA. So uh, keep that in mind the next time you need a gasket. And uh, as always, I appreciate you watching. And um, if there's you know a lot of uh, interest in this, I'll do some more 3D printing for the home shop of of interesting little things that you can do in the home shop.
appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.